Hello, I'm Céline Boudier and I work at Ocado Technology. I'm the Code for Life team lead and I'm going to talk to you about Code for Life and how we inspire the next generation of developers. So, you might wonder, wait, Ocado Technology, Ocado, is that the online supermarket? What does it have anything to do with education and teaching children how to program? So, well, actually it has a lot to do. So, Code for Life was started two years ago by Ocado Technology uh, when the UK decided to add computing at the heart of the primary school curriculum. Uh, education is actually one of the core values of Ocado. Um, the Ocado way, the values are education, entrepreneurship, environment and eating well. So education is like really, really important. Uh, we also have a foundation, the Ocado Foundation, which is part of our corporate responsibility. Um, and really a group of volunteers decided two years ago to just start on a project, um, on a mission, uh, a non-profit initiative to create free, free games that are now open source, so free and open source games, to help all students learn computing. So this is a mostly volunteer-based project, um, but we also have a small full-time team, including a software intern and a UX expert and designer. So it's a really cool team. Uh, we work in Hatfield, but also in Poland. And since we are on GitHub, we are also always looking for new volunteers to join the project from everywhere in the world. So why is it important to teach computing to children? Well, I think that Paul Clark, which is the director of technology at Ocado, uh, just put it very nicely when he said that teaching children to program is not just about nurturing the next generation of software engineers, being able to write code uh, is a transformative skill that needs to be seen as being of huge potential value, whatever your future holds. Um, indeed, I think there's something like we're always looking for new developers in the technology industry. So, of course, teaching uh, software, software skills is really important um, for us, for children. But it's really more than that. It's, it's really first, it's something that is really fun, fun to learn. It's something that is also really useful to understand the world you live in. Uh, we live in a world that is more and more uh, a digital and technology world and uh, I think it's really important to understand at least a bit the world we live in. Um, and also it's important for kids to understand that they can change things, they can actually help change the world. Uh, Linda Lucas, which is a very, uh, a very good developer and um, that worked on a book which is called Hello Ruby, and it's really good to teach also children the basics of algorithmics said that if we change a kid's perception of what's possible, we can change the entire world. And I think that's just when you said that, you've said everything about what is useful. Um, so really, I would also suggest to watch videos, for instance, from Kat Lamin, um, which is a teacher and also a very, uh, very strong advocate of teaching software skills to children. Um, that said, that's really important to make children understand the components of our world, but also, for instance, the components of the games they like to play. Uh, lots of children love Minecraft, for instance, and when they realize that they can hack into it, they feel like really happy and they really learn something, something valuable and useful. So that's it, that's all about the children, but what we are trying to do at Code for Life is help the children through the teachers. So we're really helping the teachers help the children. Um, so what about the teachers? What can we do for them? What can be actually the problem? Because there is a problem problem right now, especially in the UK, but I guess it's true everywhere, uh, is some teachers don't really know what to do. Some of them are afraid that the children are going to be better than them at, uh, at computing skills or at, at programming, um, especially in primary schools, but even in secondary schools, some of them feel like they have been um, added to the GCSE classes because they were better on Facebook than the other teachers, for instance, and they, not, they don't really know about computing. Um, so sometimes they just feel like they don't know what to do, they're a bit afraid. Um, but also, there's a lot of administrative things going on, a um, lot of paperwork, they don't have time, they don't have energy. Um, and there's a lot of resources that are available, but um, there are a lot. Like if you type coding resources for teachers on Google, you find about 25 million resources. Uh, some of them are free, but not really good. Some of them are really expensive, they just don't really know what to, what to do. So what can the teacher do? Well, they just can kick up and use Code for Life. So Code for Life um, was really, at the start, was really created thanks to, to, to a teacher, um, Sharon Harrison, um, that helped build rapid router and the teaching materials. 
So Rapid Router is the first game that was created by Code for Life, um, which teaches, I would say, algorithm thinking, so really um, computing skills, but not necessarily um, syntax. Uh, but we do uh, we do teach them Blockly and Python, but the emphasis is really on the logical thinking, uh, which is something that the teachers always feel is more important to teach the children. Um, so it's really it's it's really more useful for the children, and it's uh, less difficult for teachers to to teach a, a syntax, but more difficult to teach them the logical thinking aspect. So Rapid Router really dwells on that for a graphical language um, that is open source and created by Google. Um, so at first they will just use, for instance, move forward, turn left, turn right, but, but later on there are more complicated levels uh, where the road looks like really huge and they have to copy paste, move forward, turn left, etc. 100 times. Um, and that's when they really feel the need for uh, repeat statements, for loops, for instance. It's quite introduced quite naturally, I would say, in the game. So then they can say, like, repeat 10 times, move forward, and they don't have to copy paste it 10 times, it's done. So it's really a way for the children to learn progressively all those concepts. Um, but going back to languages, we also teach progressively um, the, I would say, a continuation between Blockly and Python. So the first levels are indeed in Blockly, but then there are some levels um, which are called like Blockly, Blockly to Python or Python View, where you actually program in Blockly, but you can see what it looks like in Python after. And the later level are just in Python. Thanks to these Blockly to Python episodes, um, where well, they really understand what it looks like in Python before. So, this game Rapid Router is really for primary school children, but the whole the whole website around around it, what we call the portal, um, is actually also very useful for the teachers themselves because they have a dashboard, they can enter their classes, they can register the students, etc. So it's very important that. Um, we make the website as user-friendly as possible for our teachers. So that's why, for instance, right now we have a redesign um, that is ongoing that should be ready quite soon. Um, James, which is our user expert, uh, has been doing a lot of interesting user research to help us redesign things. Um, for instance, he created some personas uh, from the user research that he's done, from the user interviews, that are really helpful because personas, it's a very useful concept uh, where you personify your typical your archetype of users, um, you give them uh, actually a personality, an age, a picture, um, even like tastes, uh, and then you define what is their usual scenario, how they use your website, uh, what they want from that, what are the problems with using it, etc. Um, so for instance, you realize that we've got three main types of teachers. Um, the teachers that doesn't have time for anything, that uh, is quite good, but doesn't have time at all. Um, the teacher, which is uh, a newbie that doesn't know anything about computing, um, but that is really motivated. Um, and also the teacher that is actually more experienced, uh, a bit better at technical things, but uh, is really trying to find um, other ways to, to teach computing. So code for life maybe for instance, on top of something else. So that's really nice. Uh, and we did have a very interesting quote from our teachers. For instance, one of them said, uh, we like code for life because we don't have to teach, that's from the teacher. So that's, that, that was really nice. Um, so from that, we actually uh, reworked a bit, for instance, the teaching resources page, and uh, we have the whole redesign in progress. Uh, but the teaching resources are really good because I think that Code for Life really stands out and Rapid Router really stands out thanks to the teaching resources that uh, really helps the teacher create exercises and class plans. They don't really have to think, they just have to really apply um, the exercises and the levels. Uh, without spending lots of time to create them. But of course, they, they can spend time to understand what it means, the solutions, etc. But um, that's just normal um, teaching. Um, usually, they just don't really have to, to think too much if they want to create exercises thanks to Rapid Router. So, we do provide lots of PDFs that are really useful with lesson plans, with solutions. Uh, we also have a plugged activity for, for instance, the five year old that can't read. Um, so, that's, that, that's, really, that's really nice. So now if we go back to the code that the children can write um, in the game, so you can see on the left, uh, it's a screenshot from the Python code that children can write in the Python levels of Rapid Router. So it's, it's Python, right? But if you look on the right, um, then you can see a screenshot of our code base of um, our game um, in GitHub. 
uh, which is also Python, but you can see that it uses like Django framework, it creates classes, um, so it's really fully object oriented. Um, just imports things that you might not necessarily understand if you don't Google what it does, for instance. Um, so, how actually do you bridge the gap from the simple, the simple enough um, code that makes the van move and uh, actually being able to program a game? So that's an interesting challenge, and we don't want to just do primary schools. So we have in progress a game, for instance, for secondary schools that would probably be also useful for high schools. Uh, which is so far an MMO game, so massively multiplayer online game, uh, to teach teenagers Python and artificial intelligence. So the code name so far is IMO, but it's probably going to change. Um, you have a screenshot uh, on the slide here that shows you what it looks like now, but we are working right now on a theme and a design, and uh, it's going to be amazing. Um, and it's using amazing technology, so we're using containers technology with Kubernetes, for instance. Um, it's a really cool project to be involved in, and hopefully um, the teenagers are going to like it, and the teachers too. So more re user research is to come. We are also working on an iOS app for Rapid Router, so a native, a native app for our first game, uh, but we're using C Sharp and Unity, so really interesting. If you want to get involved too, we're also on GitHub. Um, the redesign of the port is something else that we're working on and that we might need help on is the translations um, because Rapid Router is actually used in a lot of different countries so each week we are amazed of the number of countries that uses it. Um, for instance, Brazil is a great user of Code for Life um, as well as, um, I would say, South Africa, Nigeria, South Korea, um, India, um, Taiwan. So. It's quite a lot, but we need, for instance, Code for Life to be translated in Brazilian Portuguese. Our Polish volunteers already have a lot of amazing work and localizing the website and translating it in Polish. Um, but yes, that's still ongoing. And if you want to help Code for Life reach uh, the world, that would be really amazing. Um, and we're always looking to teach more levels and more skills. Um, right now, we are looking into doing something with the BBC microbit, so we say stay tuned for more. Um, if you want more technical details, well, here is uh, our pipeline, our, I would say our technology stack um, and how we coordinate on the project. So we do use Django, as I said, uh, which is a Python-based framework from web development. Um, but we do have a front-end component with JavaScript, Raphael.js, uh, SAS, Bootstrap, etc. Um, we're using lots of things like Sculpt, that is the, the on-browser Python implementation that we use in Rapid Router. Um, Blockly and Kubernetes, I already talked about that, um, and Unity for the iOS game, so it's really interesting. So within Ocado technology, uh, it's really motivating for the volunteers, for instance, um, to learn new things when they join the project as volunteers. Um, so it's really good. The project is hosted on Google Cloud Platform and we're using Travis and Snap for our integration and deployment. Um, so we are not doing full continuous deployment right now, but we're always trying to improve things. Um, we're hosted on GitHub, uh, really good. Uh, and something that I would recommend to, to, to product owner or project manager is ZenHub. Um, ZenHub is a fully integrated Kanban board that you can add uh, on GitHub. Um, it's a really great tool to work. When, especially when your teams are a bit um, are remote, for instance. Um, and we communicate a lot with Slack and using a lot of Google tools like Hangout and Drive. And we don't forget our pet dinosaur, Tricy, that is really helpful for our stand-up meetings. So if you're interested to know more about the project, um, to write us about some ideas, if you would like to contribute, either on GitHub or on our translation platform, Crowdly, um, just feel free to just write us or just to have a look. We're also on Twitter, we're on Facebook, you have the cheat sheet here uh, if you want to, to have a closer look. Um, and yes, I hope you will help us inspire the next generation of developers. Thank you very much. <laughs>